I want to do it myself. So, is this a dating sim? Eh, I don't know. We'll see. I'll just need to make sure... Uh, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. I do hope I get an option at some point. Oh, what's this? It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. Huh. Can I click on them? Also, there's only three here. Where's, where's Monica? So... Can I... Oh, I have to pick one from each page, I think. Huh. Hmm. So, let's see. Do we want to go... Who do we want to go for? Do we want to go for the childhood friend? Do we want to go for... Baka? Or do we want to go for the uh, the quiet, shy one? That's Those are basically our choices here. I don't know... So if I, if I pick hair, for example, we could get this. I could also just pick these at random for whatever looks good on the page. Hmm. You know what? Fuck it. We'll go for... Uh, what's your face? Natsuki, Sayori, Yuri. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can go towards Yuri. So let's see. But are we still also making a poem, or does it... Ah, fuck it. I'm gonna say hair is close to her. Yeah, that's how this works. Can I go back? Nope. My choices are locked the fuck in. Graveyard. Uh, let's see. Scars. There's some... There's some dark words in here. Uh, spit milk. Socks. They all have socks on. That's a good thing, I suppose. Uh, let's try waterfall. Aha, this... Mm. <laughs> uh, well, this is the... That's an obvious... Oh! She, li she liked that one. Oh, they, I didn't even notice that. If I pick one that's close to them, they hop up and down. Okay. Uh... Bissell says he would probably get the bad ending, but he'd go for the most fucked up words possible. Uh, I'm gonna try variants. Ah, yeah, okay. I, th I think I got a lock on her. What, the what does Doki Doki even mean? I don't know what effulgent means. But it's, in a, it's a complicated word, so I think she'll like it. Yeah, called it. Uh, Uncanny? Yep, nailing it. Oh, I bet it's Starscape. Nailed it. Imagination. Nailed it. My cow. If I, I just gotta keep using the most complicated word. Complicated either words or meanings. Oh. Philosophy? Uh. Probably not fickle. Precocious. No, wow, that is not what that says. That says precious. Jesus Christ. Uh... Fickle? Oh, doing it. Hmm, disoriented? A tone? A tone? At a certain point, I feel like I could pick anything and it would pick her. Uh, she likes fantasy. Oh, fuck! Wrong one. Mm. Sensation? Yep, that's her. Unrestrained would be Natsuki, I bet. Aura? Yep. Doki Doki in a Jap is a Japanese onomatopoeia. That sound your heart makes one. Oh, okay. Oh god. Things happening right now or not. Uh, unending? Yep. Infallible? 
Yep. Landscape. Yep. It's actually, this is actually pretty easy. I hope I don't. I hope I didn't need to get all of them. Analysis. Infinite. Okay, that was definitely like 15 for her. Oh, we're back in the class. Monica says hi again, Snake. And I can go back to hitting the space bar. Glad to see you didn't run away from us. Ha 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 ha. Nah, don't worry, I respond. This might be a little strange for me, but I but I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Yuri says, thanks for keeping your promise, Snake. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. It's a... That flooring does look kind of nice, actually. Anyway, Yuri continues, making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Natsuki says, oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Because he's a boy. Sayori told me you don't, didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Monica says, Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. She likes manga. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature, she says. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops into back into her seat. Sorry says, don't worry, guys. Snake always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with the busy work e without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. Yuri says, how dependable. What a man. I say, Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire. Oh, really? Sayori says, is that so? Yuri says, you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. Sayori says, how come? You and Snake can become good friends, too. Oh, and she's shy. Snake says, Sayori. S -s -s Sayori. R -r Remix. Sayori says, hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. So he says, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, Sayori. I say, me? Yuri says, not really. So he says, don't be shy. Yuri, it's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Super shy. So, uh, Yuri says, Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. What do I do? So he says, I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. I say, hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so, she says. Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. All right, she says. Well, here. She reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked you out a book that I thought you might enjoy. Please be a real book. It's a short read, so you should keep your it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. It's a book for children. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is how <laughs> how is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she th thinks I'll like despite me not reading much. Uh Zavrin has also accidentally set his house on fire. I Personally, I, and no one knows about this in my family, I almost set my grandparents' house on fire once. Don't play with matches or candles, kids. Uh, thankfully, there's a floor mat, and I threw that on top of the fire. I think I was like 12 or something. That was stupid. Uh, and Robo has also caught her oven on fire. And a pistol broke his microwave. So yeah, we're all... We're all... Prone to fire. I say, Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew, she says. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I'll, I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Mana to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So Yuri and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Oh, we're on the Yuri path so far. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. 
Shouldn't it be really easy if she... Oh, whatever. Looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah, she says. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. That's a really big book. Sorry, I say. I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, she says, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. Oh, which means she was ke she was doing some side eyes at us. Rubble, you welded your project to the shop table. Fantastic. But she's just rereading a bit of this, so... I say that's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. We're not going to talk about why she has two copies of the same book. That's fine. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. I say, just curious. How come you have left... How come you have two copies of the same book? Oh, fuck! Fuck me. Ah, she says. Well, when I stopped by the at the bookstore yesterday... Ah, no, that's not what I meant. Oh, no, she's admitting that she just bought it for me. I mean... I just happened to buy two of them. Yep. That's a normal thing that normal people do. I say, ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go, and I'm too stupid to figure it out. I say, I'll definitely start reading it soon. Yuri says, I'm glad to hear. Yeah, burning spiders or anything is pretty fucked up, Abyssal. You should probably, should probably call the cops. Yuri says, once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging, relatable story, and it's also cursed. The book itself. Is that so? What's that about, anyway? Well, says Yuri. Mmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. It's similar to the Illuminati. All right, Yuri says. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, if it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister... But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. Prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. That's a lot you're giving away. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. I say that's kind of... that's kind of dark, isn't it? It doesn't sound very dark to me, personally. You made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. She laughs. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Snake? No, it's not that, I say. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so, she says. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to, wants to be evil but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. Speaking of which, Breaking Bad. Great. Then suddenly, when you... Th <laughs> then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. Breaking Bad. I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry, she says. I don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, she says, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I, end up say if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's, I say. And then I interrupt myself. I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. You're supposed to talk about fucking books. Uh... What the fuck are you guys talking about? Okay, you're talking about killing spiders. Uh, it's a literature club, after all. Yuri says, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I say, I might as well get, you s well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. You don't have to read in this club. What are you saying, I say? Just a moment ago, you were looking forward to it. 
Let let me just get the book. I quickly retrieve the book that I put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, she says. Yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's. I'm. So, it. It's awk To be honest, it's a little weird reading their half sentences and single words and making it still make sense. I'm sorry, she says. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. Men reading near me. That is, reading in company with someone. I see, I say. Well, just let, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. I read very loudly, so. She says, all right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel a presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. Looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry, she says. I was just... Yuri, you should re you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. Is she Can Is she half Canadian? Uh, I mean, she says. I laugh. Here, this should work, right? I slide my... Wow, I'm being aggressive. I slide my desk up until uh, until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book between the two of them. Ah, she says. I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. And she thinks to herself, fuck, why did I spend the money on a second book? Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here, she says. Oh, different art. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I say. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. Look at us go. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But holding it like, but in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of her face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready, says Yuri. I say, what? To turn the page, she says. I say, oh, fuck. Oh, wow, did her eyes change? I don't know if she was looking at us like that before. I think I got a little distracted for a second. I glance over at her face again, and her eyes meet. I don't know how long I'll be able to keep up with her. That's okay, she says. You're not as used to reading, right? It... it <sighs> Everyone here is making it sound like I'm fucking illiterate. <laughs> like, I'm not retarded. Jesus Christ. I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, I say. Thanks. I continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume she finishes with the page before me, so I turn turn it by my own volition. My own volition. Jeez. I can't. I'm illiterate. Let alone my illiterate character that I'm playing. We can do the first chapter in silence. And I'm... Abyssal assumes everyone is antisocial. Abyssal... But Zavern thinks Abyssal is the weird one. Not people with anxiety about public reading. Reading in public's hard. It's actually really tough. In high school, I was forced into a... a public speaking course. And I said, ah, fuck that, and I fucking ran, I just quit the class. I just said, fuck it, I can't do this. I, I, I could not handle it at all. I lasted, like, two classes tops. It was just like, no, not for me. And then in college, there was a, a speaking thing. I forget what, the, I think it was called SIFE, Students in Free Enterprise. It's actually, like, a national thing. Anyway, um, I forced myself into that. And I forced myself to be one of the speakers. And wow, was it awful, but it really helped. So I totally relate to people who are awkward and anxious and like terrified of speaking in public. Because fuck, it's awful. Until you do it a, a bunch. And then it's not so bad. Anyway, even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting the go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri, I say. This might be a silly thought, but 
The main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Her eyes do move. Yuri, you think so? How does she? I say, well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all of the things that she says and does, like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see, she says. You remain silent for a moment. But Snake, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. That's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, no, the Yuri path. I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were so self-conscious self -conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I more meant it... I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Ah, she says. What are you saying all of a sudden? Monica. Okay, everyone. I think it's just about time we share today's poems uh, with each other. I can't. I'm just not gonna. I'm just gonna continue. We might not have enough. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah, says Yuri. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? She asks. You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Yuri says, Ah, it's not. They they use the word ah too much. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. My thumb is destroyed. All right, I say. I guess it's time to... I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Yuri says, um... I guess I don't have much of a preference either way. Hmm, I say. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. My character fucked up. What are you doing? You have an in. Oh, but I continue. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning, she says. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right, I say. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and then slip it into my bag. By the way, says Monica, did you remember to write a poem last night? I say, fuck yeah, I did. I mean, yeah, I did. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. Couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Uh, there's a little confusion in the chat. Abyssal, they are reading silently. We're reading, uh, my character and Yuri were reading silently together, for sure. Yeah, they were being quiet. Anyway, well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait, says Sayori. Sayuri and Monica enth enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayuri's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. That was a lot of detail. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. It's fucking blinding with how good it is. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Oh, I have a choice. I think it's time to make a save. That's a lot of save points. Are these pages? They are. Oh, the game doesn't break on this screen if I do this. Anyway. So, we're... I'm not sure... It's really int I'm very curious. Did I speak more with Yuri before because of the way I chose the poem. Which wouldn't make sense in real life. Like, it, like those actions are completely separate. But I'm betting that be... Uh, I'm, just because it's a visual novel, I'm betting that those options for some reason made me more interested in her. And therefore we had a conversation ahead of time. Anyway, could also just be random. Yuri seems the most experienced, so we should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair and balanced. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional, she says, with a blank stare. Ah, what was that, I say? Did I say that out loud, says Yuri. Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. That's not what the animation shows. He's going to hate me, he's, she says quietly. 
Um, I say. You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. That's... I guess you're right, she says. What am I getting so nervous for? She sweats a lot. Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors... Metaphors... <laughs> indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really, I say. Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? She says. Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um, you're not a prodigy. Fuck you. I'm better than you. Oh, no. Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of no writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. And, of course, in Japanese high schools, everyone is an expert special ti special specialist my, my words everyone's a specialist if that special test what the fuck that's not a word specialist everyone's a super specialist in something always yuri is a specialist in books of course that's something you can be blamed for there are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might, you t it might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased. A bit biased, though. Biased how, I ask? Well, never mind, she says. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing, apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. This is actually good writing advice. I, Robo, I am not fit. But it's happening, and you can't stop it. Please do- oh fuck, I, I skipped through that without reading it. So no, I'm not fit. I say it's fine. No, wait, no. I say, do you mind if I read your poem now? She says, please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if it, that's a rare opportunity for her. Which is, which is itself... No, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Uh, can I click on this to get better? No. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight... Oh, I'm noticing a lot of... A lot of words in here. <laughs> a lot of words in here that were in the word choices I had before. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calms... Calms, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The, the light flickers. I flicker back. So I can't do anything else here. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting, says Yuri. What, I say? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time... It took you a long time to read, she says. Ah, I say. Well, I just don't read script very often. I wonder if I could have just immediately clicked. Hey, Fickle! How you doing? In Zavarin, if you didn't notice in that RE playthrough, I made you read almost all of it. Uh, actually, I actually think your handwriting is pretty, I say. Hey, she says. That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short, she asks. I usually write longer poems. Not at all, I say. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Snake. Damn it. I ask, are you into ghosts, Yuri? Hoo hoo, she says. I don't know what that means. 
Actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all, Snake. Really, I say. I must have totally missed the point. Yuri says, Well, I suppose you only did glance over it after all, but remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. Ah, uh, That was... Mm. That's a little more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah, I say. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so, she says. Yeah, of course. You know, I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Snake. Ah, I say. Me too. I'm going to also do the best for me. Oh, I need to pick someone else, but I just want to read up on chat for a second. Skyrim, but with literature. Can I... My chat window is actually really fucking small for some reason. Oh well. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll go top to bottom. So we're reading to Sayori next. <laughs> 